Um, it's a seagull. It is a seagull. How's it, guys? So, Dylan and I have decided we're going to take a drive to the beach. This is Dylan Shaw. Some of you may know him, some of you may not. Hi, um, guys. I heard you can use a camera. Very like, okay. Yeah. So, I'm getting there. Yeah. So, Dylan does videography. He's like okay with photos, but his videos are really cool. Um, <laughs> We figured we're going to, we, we really have to come visit the beach, so we figured we might as well make a video about certain things that's going to be done to the car in the background, which is my Audi S3. But we also figured we're going to keep ourselves busy with a little bit of a project. So, we, the car's been built as a show car slash stance car. Um, and it's kind of thinking like, is it worth keeping it in that? Because I don't know, it's it's kind of been around for a while as it's car and you know, it hasn't really seen too many changes in the last year or two, although I've wanted to. Um, but the idea is to transition it to a sort of like race vibe. Yeah, so a new chapter of its life. Yeah, basically. So it's a good platform. To start off with, yes. Yeah, it's a good S3 four wheel drive. Turbocharged, light. Um, what? Because I'm assuming we're going to strip everything out. Hmm. In fact, tell us what's the plan. So, so the plan is at the moment. So it's got air. It's got full. Yeah, it's got full management. Um, it's got quite the it's like the old boot install going and everything sound system. But it adds a lot of weight. So the whole idea is. Hmm, so we want a car that's as light as possible. So the idea is to probably strip as much out of the car boot back seats is already gone um, probably door panels as well and i was thinking kind of going like with a carbon fiber door panel for example like very thin uh, just that there is a door panel cardboard works Card well cardboard with like no no no, no. like <laughs> just cut out a piece of cardboard stick it on there as long as you have something to pull off a handle um, no. I don't know, so, so the idea is like, like make it cool, but like, because you can also take a race car to a, a show. So, I mean, you can put it on display and stuff. Oh, so taking the air out, taking the sound system out and probably just selling the air and then getting a reasonable set of coins. So, I mean, there, there's like, there's BC, there's, what's it, KW? But Polstein. Polstein, Kony, they're all a bit pricey though at the moment. Yep. Um, it doesn't help that the rand on is quite high. Yep. Like it's stupid high at the moment. It's close to 20, but well, it's been for quite some time. So to bring any major brands in a big price. Um, there, is, there are other brands which are also like good, like art. Um, the, the, what's it? The yeah. static, static art. So we're kind of looking in that direction. And I kind of want to find out from other people what the experience has been of it. Because you kind of want to use it for track days. I'm also going to stop saying kind of. You? You can. I have. Um, I have static art in the in the Mark Six, um, and I mean I've taken it on the track. If it performs okay, I'm, I'm happy with it. My next option, or in fact my first option, will always be um, FK. Yeah. As like your your higher end budget coil open. So FK has always been. I mean I have the Polo. I, I've had it on many of my cars in the past so yeah but static art i think that's that's a good way forward as a budget um a budget friendly if you're not going to do the high end stuff so, so so that's also the thing it's about buying according not just to budget but according to needs so for example you can go and buy really fancy coilovers but if i'm not going to use it and kind of actually put it to, to good use then yeah. it's actually a waste of money so something somebody that's going to be using a car for track days all the time yeah. they are a hardcore driver they they, they, they drive on um, I wouldn't say that I, I'm a very sort of passive driver I do put the car through its paces and and it, and, and a go-kart as well as I found out yesterday <laughs> so Brett isn't as bad as I thought thank you um, I was faster than him, I just, I just want to put it out there, 
but uh, it wasn't it wasn't bad. So yeah. But I think what we enjoy also, what we enjoyed about the go karts, but driving also is the bends. Because anybody, yes. well, I, I wouldn't say, I, I don't want to just, I don't like saying anybody can drive a car in a straight line. Because it takes balls and it takes skill to keep a, a strong car straight. But mm -hmm. bends are exciting. The mountain pass is yeah. exciting. I, not every, like you shouldn't drive fast on the mountain bends. I'm just speaking hypothetically, if you do, then it's it, it, then you kind of then you want something that's going to work in all the yeah. car there. But also something that you're going to enjoy mm. and not kill you. You know, because although you don't want to say it, there's, with us getting older, you also want a softer ride. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I am one hundred percent with that. Yeah, because our bones are brittle, our back and, and yeah, you don't get testicles to be yeah. all loose when you oh, yeah. <laughs> come off a drive. Take today, for example, when Brad picked me up, uh, the seats. I cannot, for the life of me, I cannot do wing backs. I could 10 years ago, but today, no. It's just they, they, they serve a purpose, and as a daily, I, I'm so sorry, I can't. They look nice, I, I love them, but no, not for me. Yeah, because you kind of have to. But see, so that's sort of also the reason for the for wanting to maybe get rid of the air. That's cool, but most of us look ridiculous getting into a low car. It's impractical. How do we get the practical car? We probably don't care about that. But it is like the lane over and then getting in. But it's cool until it's kind of getting to a point like, do you want to keep doing this? And are you driving the car as much as you want to, or are you not driving because of the impracticality? So coilovers, you know, it's cool. You don't have to wait for the tank and the, the air to fall out the tank, sorry. And you don't have to sort of clean out the tank every month. Um, if one should, the maintenance. And so you're kind of just doing the, 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 the regular stuff. Um, Whereas with coilovers, you just get in the good. car, start and drive and go home after it. Yeah. I might be a bit lazy to adjust it. That's why you get it to a, a height, like with the polo, I'm at a height where I can get in, anybody can get in, they can drive, it's comfortable, you know, you can get from A to B. And then if, like on a Sunday or whatever, I'm feeling for a track event or I want to go do a mountain pass, I can adjust, do what I have to do, and then at the end of the day, I, I adjust again and I go. So it's not it's not the end of the world that you can't press a button anymore. Um, it's labor intense, but I prefer that. The, the the feeling that you get of taking a tool out, the spanner and you know, getting dirty and all of that, that for me that's what it's about. That, I enjoy that. That works well for you. So the thing is I wouldn't say it doesn't work well. I've never had coilies. Um, I've driven a car with a lowering kit, the that's different, I've never had coilies because I was probably too lazy and so I just saved up for air because I, I I know me. Yeah. But now I'm kind of saying like, you know, let's just give it a bit. The loading kit wasn't that bad. Driving mean, somebody else's car with a loading kit. Shouldn't that person should have tried to mention. Uh, so it wasn't bad uh, to drive on one height that's relatively low all the time. But also, so now I'm sitting thinking, because it's, it's quite a decent sound system in here that can go in the other car also. So there's a full rockwood sound system in here and that could actually be put to good use as a daily driver, or well, sorry, in a daily driver. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot of I agree. plans and ideas, but also do it safely when I do it properly. So, and I think that's where you were saying quite a bit, because like, so when the car is done, we're even a user, are you taking it to track days? And I think that's going to be important is go and use the car. So if you're going to build it for that, Go and use it. Yeah. And it's nice to drive on a regular basis, you know, feeling the power, you know, all that type of thing. But where you're going to probably use it the best, that to its you know, potential is going to be on a track. Mm -hmm. And that is available. Yeah. Uh, look, like I was telling um, Nadir, is that they busy building a um, Mark 1 race car, a set team. It's all well and good you're going to build something like this, but you have to at least 
take it to the track yeah. and feel what something like this is capable of. So in your case, if you are going to pull for, for the track and you want to fetch times and you know that kind of stuff and you want to clip your apex and you yeah. then pull within your means but you have to enjoy it. You, have, you have to take it out there and experience it. It's pointless having a car like that and you're driving it on normal public roads. It's not the same. Yeah, so you're not utilizing it. Yeah, so like, you, you're not going to be flat out on a bend. It's, it's totally different when you're out there on the track. So, kind of the starting point, I'm going to say, would probably be to, well, first of all, the coil overs. Because we have to get the car off the air struts and then can start stripping it. Because, well, if we strip it when it's on the floor, you know, <laughs> it's going to be awkward. Uh, it's not going to be the best idea. So, I'm thinking the best idea is, well, start thinking about what coilovers I'm going to buy and then get it on those coilovers um, and, and then start stripping everything. So, just the car doesn't need anything inside to drive but at the moment it's everything in the boot to to just be able to operate basically yeah. so i think that's a good starting point but then we can start playing around with performance things performance safety and um, mm -hmm. i think uh, mm -hmm. right. yeah. yeah whatever whatever you're gonna do to the car um i'm sure your audience will want to know in terms of cost price pricing and what it cost for you to go from a stance build, you know, a, a sort of race car build. Yeah, and, um, yeah give, them, give them the pricing and you know, how much was the coil overs, how much was this, how much was that. I'm sure if you would like to know that kind of information, let us know in the comments. And um, yeah, give them what they want. Thank you. So maybe just a concluding comment to add on to that is, I think that it's gonna. We're looking at the balance between affordability, yeah. and also what is the best bang for buck. Because there's a lot of products available for this platform, but we kind of want to get stuff that gives you the best performance, best safety, best handling. Because speed also doesn't just come from you know engine mods, especially on a track. It comes from handling and safety of uh, components. So I think we'll do that. We will drop as much information about it. So if I'm going to order a component, I'm going to drop in, you know, give a five or 10 minute breakdown, a 15 minute, you know, we'll see what works for people and how we engage in it. The idea is to inform, um, but I think we all learn through our mistakes <laughs> and we can hopefully learn from other people's mistakes. So I think it's going to be a cool project. I agree. Bye. Guys, thank you. Let's see where it goes. As Dylan said, please drop your comments, um, criticize us. We're open to it. Uh, we, we're learning here, but we, we, we're open to what you guys would also love to see. And I think that that's quite important. So we're trying to engage as much as, as possible. We were too close. Too close. Wood. Yeah. Come through here. Yeah. Hmm? So why we need to come through the road. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
pasando, pero, pero no llega.